Well, let's let's talk about that for a second because um, you know we touched on it a little bit uh, in our last interview, but I actually did go through parts of your book uh, before this interview. So you grew up, I guess, between Compton and Slauson. Yeah, five, age zero to five. My mom had two kids by 19. So my sister's that's older, 17, me at oh. 19. She was living in a house with my grandmother. We got a very aspirational family. My grandmother grew up, was an adult uh, in Watts. Watts riots hit. She's like, we getting out of Watts. But she moved to Compton. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is moving on up. This is a, this is a real story of, of ascension. Then my mother has two kids at 19, and she's like, I can't have my kids raised in Compton. I had lost three uncles, you know, um, over the course of my my, my childhood uh, to gang banging the drugs, to the streets, you know, all that stuff. And those are her brothers. So she's like, I'm raising y'all outside this neighborhood. So we moved to Slauson and Edgemar, South Central, you know, over there, 60s hood. And we right on the edge of, damn, we close to like Windsor Hills and Baldwin Hills and, you know, Different conditions, different class, but we still right there off Slauson where they got Nipsey. So it, it, it's right there. And, it's, and that was my reality growing up. Right. And, you know, you mentioned your uncles. I want to touch on that. So your uncles were all gangbanging, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, three, I was so three young, of, but two. Three of your uncles were gangbanging. Yeah, a couple, maybe two of them for sure, maybe the third. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so two of them. We're in a gang. Do you know what gang they were in or no idea? Uh, Pompa Block, Compton Crip. Yeah. Okay. So two of them actually got murdered. One suicide. One, yeah, murder because he got, he got hit, but it took a while for him to die. But yeah. And then another one, yeah, murdered. Okay. And I guess one of them went to prison and then committed suicide because he was supposed to go back in. Right. He said, I'm not going back in. I'm going in the body bag before I go back to jail. Wow. And he, he killed you, himself around the corner from my grandmother, and she heard the gunshot of her own son taking his life right where I grew up. Did you have conversations with your uncle before he killed himself? Uh, no, because I was so young. And he, it's weird. These were the conversations, or these were the moments. I had started to bubble as a young kid. Like, he's smart, but damn, he is talented athletically. Like, th they were giving me money to race their homeboys who were like 18, 20, and I would smoke them. I'm seven, eight. Like, literally beat them for real. You know, out front, no shoes, street light to street light. I'm getting them at seven and eight. I was a national track champion growing up. So it was, uh, I'm not this. I'm not all this. I was lean, a little tall, and I could go run. So I used to see them be the man in the hood, have all the cars, all the money, looked all fresh, whatever that is, had all the girls. But then they would come in the crib, all that got undressed, and you could see the pain, and sometimes crying. So they always had to keep that, that pecking order in terms of authority. Like, they could never come to me with their real pain, but I saw it. So we never had that conversation because they always just wanted to show their pride in me. Stay away from this. Don't do it like me and go get it. And that was my message. I was able to live through them vicariously and go get it. Okay. And you have that shirt on right now that says never sold dope. So Shout out to Mike Cole. Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> Shout out to my boy Mike Cole who hooked it up. Okay. Dope shirt. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, pun intended. Um <laughs> So basically what you're saying is that because you were such an exceptional athlete, you were shielded from the gangs and the drugs and the violence and everything else like that? I mean, shielded is loose because I still got jacked. I still got shot at a few times. They weren't shooting at Marcellus, but bullets went by Marcellus. You know, they shot up my game one time. We playing on the practice, I mean, on the game field, manual arts, yeah, 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 bullets hitting the dirt. Uh, went to games before. I went to see Keyshawn, my boy, growing up. Keyshawn Johnson went to one of his all-star games. Me and my dad, they shot it up, shot us up. A uh, couple other instances getting shot at. But my protection really came from my sister and my identity. Like, I knew who I was because I knew who I wasn't. I was not a dope dealer. I was not a gangbanger because I saw it for real. And I was like, hell no. Nah. One, y'all not really winning because you wouldn't come in this house crying. And two... I got to get it for all of us. My mom was a straight-A student, had two kids, had to abort mission, 
and focus on us. I got to pay that off. I ain't about to sit up here and be fresh for a few years and then die. So my identity was different. And because I had an older sister who was about that life, and I had the security of a lot of family members in the gangs, so don't mess with teddy bears, they would say. Because <laughs> one dude tried, and it's in the book. Um, it didn't work out so well. Um, and I'm not proud of that. That's just what my situation was. So I still got into a lot of issues, but they weren't heavily recruiting me for the street life because in part, I wasn't even enticed by it.